Hi, my name is Kenneth, and I would like to show how to fetch data from an SQL server laying in a data warehouse, Bygdrift data warehouse. And I'm logging into the SQL database uh, through Asia <coughs> Active Directory, and I get right into it because I'm in the upper right corner of this Power BI. Uh, I logged in as Kenneth Bo Bardal Kastensen in Hillerød Tenant. So no need to passwording or anything. And I have two, uh, two databases in here, one called HillMSQL and one other HillMSQL uh, test. And here in the test database, I have uh, some data from Eloablik, a Danish uh, power consumption hub uh, that gathers data about uh, power consumption. And the other tables was from uh, Dalux FM, that is our portfolio of our estate. And now all the data are loaded and I have a pretty uh, bad database, 30, 33 kronos per, per month. So this took four, four minutes to, to load it in. So if you have some more money than you in your Asia portal can set the database up to, to go uh, faster than that. Now I jumped over to look at relations. <clears throat> and here we have the uh, the tables that I've loaded, and you can see how these strings are connected uh, to the tables. And uh, the strings shows the relations between them. And when I put up these relations, I easily can take a property from this, assets, and combine it with a property from metering point, and they all stick together in Power BI. So it's uh, important to make these relations uh, between the tables and to get an un to have an understanding of what happens what I what are these kind of relations that you can make you can see one of the relations here we have in metering point i have metering point id and over here in assets i have outer number and now i make a relation that is one to an asterisk and that is one to many but it should have been a one to one relationship between these two tables so over in assets, there are too many uh, outer anomer. That's because I haven't uh, removed all the nulls in the assets. So now I go back and go up to up in the ribbon and home and transform data. And I go to, I'm in the table assets. And I go down to the column called the outer anomer and just filtering out that I won't see any nulls and okay and now there's no nulls in uh, in power bi I just have to go through the data once more to, once more and let's try to make it the relation again outer number to metering point id and one to one there are one outer number in asset and one uh, metering point in metering point detail, uh, details over there. Outer and number and metering points are the same. So now I try to do the same with the, our portfolio of uh, buildings. So building master ID should go to master ID in buildings. And that gives an one to many. We have one building that can have many assets, but we cannot have one asset that have many that has many buildings. And I try to do the same with building to a state, a state master ID to a master ID. And that gives one estate for many buildings, one to many, one and an asterisk. So now I put it all up and these are uh, readings per day and readings per month and readings per, uh, per hour or per week. So now we have up here, we have states and I have uh, a latitude and a longitude put into a visualization. And now all the dots come in, comes in from Dialux FM. And now I would vary the size of uh, how much consumption of electricity they use. And I take readings per month, I think I took and put in the quantity. And now you can see that's uh, it differs in in this in their sizes 
So now I just put in some uh, some data that we will have when we hover over uh, over the points. So now I have uh, how many metering points are there? So now I took one of the big ones and it says that there's 12 metering points on that estate. I could also have used this latitude and longitude from buildings. And then I would have had a lot of points. Now we can see that it's on Trolles Minnes or the Sewer 2 and that's our municipality uh, main seat. So that's it. Bye.